Hello everybody, you're very welcome to this episode of Programming and Algorithms. In this episode we're going to look at binary trees. So last semester we did look at binary trees for a second, and a binary tree is a tree it's that's made up of nodes, and each node has three parts. The three parts are a value, a left pointer, and a right pointer. So here's an example of a full binary tree. It's each node has a value. If we look at the top one, it has 23, and then it points to a value on the left, 14, and a value on the right, 68. So each node, typically in a, in a well-balanced binary tree, it either points to a value on the left and right, or no values at all. But sometimes we can get binary trees where the left node points to a value and the right node doesn't, but that's, th th that happens as well sometimes. We'll also notice if we look at the value numbers, Everything to the left of the root, which we call the top value, the root 23, everything to the left is smaller than 23, and everything to the right is bigger than 23, and they have an exact order in which they go in. And if we look at the number 14, everything to the left of 14 is smaller than 14, everything to the right is bigger. 68 is the same, everything to the left, 57 is smaller, and everything to the right, 83 is bigger. So as long as we keep that sequence going, we have a, what's called a balanced binary tree. This kind of structure, like a linked list, is very effective for certain types of operations, particularly in operating systems and things like that. So in terms of terminology, the top node is called the root. Any node that has children is called a parent. Any um, nodes underneath the top node are called children and, and the very bottom sets of nodes are called leaves. leaves. Something can be both a parent and a child. The root is obviously both, uh, the root is a parent as well as being the root. So this is the kind of terminology that's used. So how do we declare uh, a node for a binary tree in pseudocode? We say type node, we declare an integer value, and then we recursively say there's a node type called left pointer and a node type called right pointer, and those node types, which are the same type as the overall type, point to another node of this type. So that's our recursive definition of a tree. We look at implementing how to create a tree, how to delete a tree, and how to check if a tree is empty. And this is very much like checking if an array is empty or checking if a linked list is empty. How do we create a tree? Well, when we create a binary tree, it's normally an empty binary tree. So all we do is say that the root pointer, if we have a pointer called root, that it points to null. So uh, 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 when we create a tree, we create an empty tree. So that's it. Our code is module create tree, and then it's root assign null, and that's it. That's our, our create a tree. How do we delete a tree? It's very similar. All we say is root is assigned null. So whatever root used to point to now is pointing to null. So that means there is no tree there now. And how do we check if a, if a tree is empty? Well, you, I guess you can guess. If the root points to null, it's empty. If the root doesn't point to null, it's not. So we can say it one of two ways, as, as with the other programs before. We can say, have a variable called empty. And if root is null, then empty is true. Else, empty is false. And then we can return empty. Or we can quite simply just return root equals null. So if root is equal to null, then it's empty. If root is not equal to null, then there are some values. So this pointer root either points to the top of the binary tree or points to null. If it points to null, the tree is empty. If it points to some node, then the tree is not empty. Let's look at three more modules or methods we can create. Display a tree. Find a node within a tree and insert a value into a binary tree. So let's try display a tree first. So here's display a tree, and to do this, there are two ways we can do it. We can either do it using loops, iteratively, or we can do it recursively by calling a program and within the program itself. So let's look at an iterative solution, an iterative approach where we use loops to go through the tree. So if I want to display a tree, if I want to display the values, particularly in numerical order, if we look at the tree, we can see what the order should be. It should read 11, 14, 21, 23, 57, 68, 77, 83, and 97, if we want to go from smallest number to biggest number. Obviously, where we point to is, though, the number 23. So we start at the number 23. If we just printed out the values, higgledy-piggledy, in the order they're in, 
I wouldn't quite get in the right sequence. So what I want us to do is use an intermediate structure to allow us to print the values out in the correct order. So check this out. If we create a stack and then we push values onto the stack. So we start with the root and we push the root value onto the stack, that's 23. And we keep going left until we get to the bottom of the left. Then we stick 14 onto the stack and then we stick 11 onto the stack. Once we've got to the number 11, then we've got to the lowest value in the list. And the lowest value in a, in a balanced binary tree will always be the leftmost value if we keep going down left. So all we need to do now is take the values from the stack. We can see the order at the top of the stack is 11, the next value is 14, the next value is 23, so they are in the correct order. Then once we've got to the bottom of the leftmost element of the tree, we start popping values off the stack, and we can print out 11, then pop up to 14. But then the next value, when we get to the next level up, what we should do is check if there's anything to the right of that. And the number 21 is to the right of 14, so we stick that onto the stack. And then we pop off that and pop off 23. And then as you can see, 11, 14, 21, 23 is in the correct order. Once we've looked at all of the values to the right of the root, uh, to the left of the root, then we go to the right of the root. And then we start pushing them onto the stack. So we go to the first element to the right, 68, put that on the stack and then go left, left, left again. And keep taking values from the left. The only value to the left as it happens is 57. So stick that on. Now we keep going down until we've reached the leftmost value of the, of the right branch of the tree. We've reached at 57, so now we start popping values back off again. 57 gets popped off. 68 gets popped off. Then we keep go to the next node down and go left again. So pop, push 83 on, then push 77 on. Then pop 77 off, pop 83 off, go to the right and then pop 97 off. Just, I hope you get that the, the point here is because the way the order of the nodes within a tree is, if we want to print them in ascending order, smallest to biggest, 11, 14, 21, 23, 57, in that order, then what we need to do is go down the tree to the left as far as we can, keep sticking values as we're going onto the stack, and then when we get to the bottom of the tree, pop them off, and then that'll mean it'll come up as 11, 14, 21, 23. So that, that's what, why stacks are useful, because they allow us to traverse structures like this. So let's see the code. The module is display tree. We're, cr we're creating a, a, a node type that has left and right pointer and a value. We're going to create a stack. We're going to call it binary tree stack or bin stack. And we'll create an instance of a binary tree that's, and, and wh wherever that binary tree is, the root will point to the current value we have and we'll create a boolean called finished and set it to false for the moment. And then our loop simply is, while we're not finished, if the current value is null, then whatever is on the stack, push it, print it out, otherwise keep going to the left, to the left, to the left until we get to the bottom of the left, then when we get to the bottom of the left, as we're going down, push values onto the stack, and then when we get to the bottom of the left, push those values out, and then go, start going to the right and go to the left again. So that's our pseudocode for uh, displaying a tree iteratively. Now just for contrast, let's look at the recursive solution. That is to say, when we write a program that can call itself. Recursively, the code looks like as follows. We set the current value to point to the root, then we, set, we have a program called display tree. If current is null, then we just say, if, as long as current is not null, then display tree left, print current, display tree right, end if end. That's the whole recursive solution. No need for a stack, no need for anything else. We're calling display tree within itself, going left first, all the way to the left, when it gets to the bottom of the left, then it hits a null, then it'll keep printing the values out, pop them up recursively, because recursively works on a stack, then go to the right and do the same thing. So this is such a simpler solution compared to the iterative solution. And we'll see that as we look at the other two methods or modules as well. 
that because binary trees are declared recursively, that is a node is declared, the left and right pointers are nodes to our node type. Using recursion is always probably the best way of doing this. So let's look at if we want to find a value within a tree, how do we do it iteratively? If I want to find, let's say, the value 57, I have to start at the root because that's the only starting point I have. And I check if 23, the root, is bigger or less than 57. Because the, the, the number 57 is bigger, we go to the right. If the number was smaller, we go to the left. So we go to the right, we hit 68. Once we hit a value that's bigger than the number we're searching for, we go left. So we go right if the number is bigger and left when the number is smaller, and then we'll hit upon 57. So let's look at the iterative solution again. Our module is called find node. We have a boolean is found, that's at the false. Then we set our root to be the top. Then we keep looping around while the node is not found. If at any point we find that n is equal to the current value, then we say we found it. Otherwise, if n is bigger than the current value, we go right, else n is less than the current value, and we go left. And we keep looping around until we do that. So that's our iterative or looping solution. We have a while loop there to do it. This program assumes that the value n that's being passed in is in the binary tree. If we put in the value 99, that's not in the binary tree, this wouldn't work. So we have to be finding a node that's actually there. We, we could extend the code for finding value, checking if the value is there or not, but this is sufficient. And let's look at the recursive solution to that. Slightly shorter, our, our module is find node again. It takes in the root initially and the value n we're looking for. If, we've, if the value that's, that's currently been pointed to is, is the value we're looking for or it's null, then we just say return. Otherwise, what we do is, if n is less than the value, we're, the current value being pointed at, we go left, else we go right. And again, we can see that the recursive solution, which calls find node itself over and over again, means it recalls find node, except this time it's passing in the left part of the tree or the right part of the tree and looking for the number within that subset of the tree means it's a much more easy program to write, much more effective in terms of understandability. One more which is to insert a value into the tree, the value n. If we look at it from an iterative point of view, what do we do? Let's say we want to stick in the number 45, well where does that go? Where would 45 go? Well, looking at the tree, would it go to the left or the right? The root is 23, so it needs to be bigger. 45 is bigger than 23, so it has to go to the right of 23. 68, though, is, is larger than 45, so it has to go to the left of there. So then we're down at number 57. So because 57 is bigger than 45, the value we want to insert in, we need to stick the node 45 pointing from 57 hanging off the left node. So let's see it. Keep going, keep going, and then boom. That's where 45 goes in. It hangs off the left node of 57 because all values to the left of the node have to be less than it and all values to the right have to be greater than it. So that's the exact position. There can be no other position that the value of 45 can go into correctly in a balanced binary tree. So let's see the code, insert a node, how do we do it? We um, first set current to be the root, then we create a new node. That The left and right node point to nothing but our, our, our node end. So if we just go back for a second, the grayed out 45 there, that's what we're creating. We're creating that node, it's the left and right node point to nothing, and the value of that node has 45 in it. So going forward again. That's us creating that node. Now, how do we know where to hang it off correctly? What we say is, if as long as current is not null, if n is bigger than current, then go to the left, else go to the right, and keep looping around doing that until we find a null value. When we find a null value, then hang this new node off, whatever, off, off that value then, because the current will be null then when you exit the loop. Recursively, we can do that slightly differently. Um, we create a new node, same as before. Our method or module is called insert node. It takes in current and the, the value we want to insert in. We create a new node 
and then all we do is we say if n is bigger than the current value, go right, otherwise go left, and that's it. So it's a much easier, cleaner solution in many ways. So that's it. Thanks very much. We'll see you on the next episode.